This video will go over the process for creating a protein model for 3D printing. A preparation of a model of the Zika virus will be shown in this example. Structure data can be generated from a variety of scientific techniques, most commonly X-ray crystallography. This particular model of the virus was generated using cryo-electron microscopy, or cryo-EM. After structures are published, they are stored on online databases and can be viewed for free. The major source for protein structure data is the RCSB Protein Data Bank, or PDB for short. Each individual structure on this website is associated with a four-character code, which can be used to access structural data via molecular viewers. There are many free viewers available, but the program Chimera is a strong choice for use in preparing protein models for 3D printing. PDB data usually appears as a ball and stick form, or basic ribbon form, when brought into a molecular viewer, which can make it hard to distinguish between protein and relevant ligands. This model of an opioid receptor clearly demonstrates this issue. The structure can be manipulated in the viewer using console commands and simple drop-down menus to create a printable object. Certain amino acids, ligands, or even individual atoms can be freely colored to communicate a specific point. Models can also be represented using different options, including a surface. Ribbon and surface representations are ideal for 3D printing. In this example, Several small monosaccharides have been colored on the virus to highlight important sites of glycosylation. These sites distinguish Zika from other flaviviruses. The final model's monosaccharides are colored red and also feature colored and surfaced individual subunits to communicate the virus's patchwork-like structure. Of note, structural supports can be added within the program to improve the strength of given models. Supports may be necessary for certain models to survive the 3D printing process. These are particularly useful if printing ribbon models. Models are imported into the printing software, where final adjustments can be made. When the printer is started, the software cuts the object into layers, and applies ink and binder layer by layer until the object is completed. For reference, the 3D printer at the URI College of Pharmacy utilizes an inkjet color system that can produce millions of different colors. This makes it ideal for producing models of drugs and proteins, where several colors may be needed to communicate a given concept. Depending on the size of a model, printing time can last as little as a few hours to over half a day. After a print is completed, the model will be buried by unused powder within the printing bed. A vacuum system is built into the printer, which can be used to unearth the model. After enough powder has been removed, the model is transferred to a depowdering station built into the printer. The station has a built-in nozzle that blows pressurized air, allowing for the cleaning of any residual powder. Notice how an opening has been built into the model, which allows for any powder inside the model to be drained or blown out. After the powder has been completely removed, the model is taken to a post-processing station where a resin is poured over it. This resin strengthens the model and adds definition to the coloring. After the model has been completely covered in resin, it is placed on a drying bed for an hour or two for completion. 